on his words and uh, <clears throat> be able to understand the uh, deeper things of the bible dear brethren it's uh, indeed uh, it is through god's spirit that we all have gathered together on this platform where uh, the only objective and uh, and the focus is to gather more of a spirit through the word of god so uh, we've been uh, hearing this uh, topics the truth from the bible for the past quite some weeks and uh, let us also hope and pray today that uh, yet another new truth will be unfolded to us so uh, the topic that we have chosen today is uh, the three ways so the three ways in the bible so we usually have heard two ways in the bible right so now uh, what is the three way so let us understand by going through this uh, study and the lesson uh, let us uh, read the key verse in matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 matthew 7 13 and 14 Just so will you read Matthew seven thirteen fourteen? Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that lead to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead unto life, and few there be that find it. Yeah. So here in this verse of Matthew seven thirteen and fourteen. we see mentioned two different ways which is uh, the first one being uh, a broad way with a wide gate and a narrow way with a straight gate uh, so the verse says reads like this the the broad way that leadeth to destruction and many there uh, you know many there which will find this uh, you know the way and a narrow way with a straight gate which leadeth unto life and it is very few who find it so uh so now what are these two ways traditionally uh these two ways are thought to be leading to heaven and hell isn't it that's what we all have been thinking but, but is that so uh these are the words actually spoken by our lord jesus so we need to remember that and bear in mind because jesus whenever he spoke he spoke in a very different language okay right so what is that language let us read that in matthew 13 verses 34 matthew 13 34 all these things spake jesus unto the multitudes in parables and without a parable speak he not unto them please underline all these things jesus spoke in parable and without a parable he never spoke anything so mind you dear brethren jesus has it is very seldom that he spoke without a parable so most of the time most of the uh, things that he spoke was parabolic they were parabolic statements now uh our lord in the in the scriptures in the gospels has spoken uh, over 39 parables or little stories so then uh you know how do we understand these uh, parabolic st- statements right so the thus here we see uh, the ways that is mentioned in the bible here in uh, in the 7th uh, chapter of 13 and 14 are parabolic so now what does that mean right so are we really literally entering a broad way every day are are there are there very few people who are literally entering a narrow way no it is not so right so let us bear in mind this is a parabolic statement okay so now we will try and understand what it really means what do they really mean 
we can uh, understand by an illustration or an example okay so uh, for example when a young boy or a girl when they get into wrong ways okay so ba basically we call them being wayward okay and they get into uh, wrong uh, you know habits and practices and you know end up being in trouble so what is that we question them we generally ask them which way is your life headed right so what does it mean it basically refers to a life path taken right so which path have you chosen for your life is what it means so too here uh, basically we see that you know uh, there are two paths or two choices for life available this day right even as per the scripture this is what jesus is trying and uh, telling us here that there is a way which is broad a broad way which is chosen by numerous people almost all of them get into that and uh, you know and that leads to destruction right and then then there is another way which is another way which is very very few who enter and get into it okay so that's these are the two different life paths which has been chosen and available for the people across the world so uh, as we saw the broad way leads to destruction and the narrow way leads to life now what does this mean what it means by this destruction and the life right remind you again all the words and the statement is a parabolic in nature and thus it needs to be uh, you know uh, studied explored and discovered the real the truth that 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 is behind it <clears throat> so let us start with the with 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 the uh, broad way first <clears throat> please read in matthew 7:13 once again Matthew chapter seven verses thirteen. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Yeah. So now our pursuit is to find which way is this, right? So uh, let us read another verse and uh, to understand this in Proverbs fourteen verses twelve. Proverbs. Chapter fourteen, verses twelve. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes. So the life path or way of the world of mankind generally seemeth right uh, to them, uh, but the end thereof we read as we see the ways. Uh, you know the way lead to death okay so the destiny is death so the the choice that they make seemeth good seemeth right but what is the end so the 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 end or the culmination is the death right so now what kind of way would it be that would end in the ways of death why death and which is this way that has led uh, you know man to destroy himself So let us uh, uh, re- look for the answer in Romans chapter six verses twenty three. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So yes, so this uh, way must be the way of sin, which draws one into destruction, which is death, the ultimate. A destruction of man is through death. So now, just think about it. There are various destructions happening all around us, day in and day out. So you see a businesses being destroyed due to loss and bankruptcy. Uh, house or buildings being, uh, you know, destroyed due to natural calamities, earthquakes and floods and whatnot, right? And then uh, you know the, the friendship being destroyed due to quarrelling and you know jealousy. and and that that sets them apart and then the cities and uh, you know countries are, again they also go through huge uh, destruction sometime due to very big uh, calamities like tsunami and uh, then marriages being destroyed 
through divorce, uh, the various reasons for divorce, being adultery, being unfaithful, being incompatible. So there is this destruction. And then there is body destruction, which is through disease and accidents and whatnot, right? So all these destructions have a way of recovery. But there is one kind of destruction that is final and ultimate, which is death. Okay, and that has no recovery as of now. There is no hope of recovery. So yeah, the death, death is the most terrible destruction. You, you all must have, uh, you know, attended uh, uh, some funerals and you would have seen the helplessness and the hopelessness of the people that, uh, you know, who are bereaved and, uh, you know, grieving for their loved ones, right? So this, there is no consolation at all for the loss that has been suffered by the family, by the, the near ones. So, so too, you know, just imagine the very first funeral in the Bible, which was the death of Abel, who was destroyed by Cain, his brother, right? So uh, it, it is really unimaginable, uh, dear brethren. Although we know this is a very hard truth, we, we don't kind of uh, you know, feel happy about it. it is, though death is certain, we believe it is not going to happen to anybody or it's not going to touch us. But the ultimate truth is the wages of sin is death. So we all are sinners and someday we all are going to die. Okay, so uh, as the time passed, we see even in the very first death, okay, now we see the children do not return to home. I mean, the Adam and, uh, you know, their family, they are awaiting for their kids and they have not returned. Now, what has happened? There is a lot of worry, there is concern, okay, and uh, apparently when they started searching, they see that. Uh, uh, Abel is in a deep sleep. He's asleep and he was bleeding. So it was kind of, uh, you know, a very big uh, commotion within the family. They know not what has happened because this is the very first incident which is, uh, uh, you know, which, which has occurred in their family. Okay. So just close your eyes and understand, uh, you know, imagine the, the situation that our First parents would have gone through the the, the sorrow, the turmoil, the uh, the very first loss in their family, right? And it was such a loss that uh, it was not, it could not be uh, corrected, or it could not, it it was kind of a irreparable, right? So then we see the elder one being the murderer and the second one being you know, dead. So this is what the Lord God meant when he said, thou shall surely die. Right? And there was this death. There was a loss. So then we see there is a scene of sorrow and mourning. And uh, this would have broken forth uh, from Adam and Eve and his little family and, and that the first funeral of the earth. So yeah, this way of sin and death that began there and upon which the whole mankind is now walking. So this is that Broadway which leads to ways of death or destruction. So the world's many billions walk in this way. As we read, that, read in the verse, it says, many go in there at. So the Broadway of sin has been an inherited condition. We have inherited it from our parents. Let us read it in Psalm 51 verses 5. Psalm 51 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yes. So uh, many have misunderstood that this was thinking that uh, David was speaking only about himself. 
But no, that is not so. For re we read very clearly of the same matter also in Romans 5 verses 12. Romans chapter 5 verses 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So very clear, right? It is, sin has become our heritage. We inherit it from our forefathers, from our parents. And then we pass it on to our kids. And they, they pass it on to their kids. And this is how this has been going on for thousands of years, for many millennia. So this sin is passed on at the very birth or, or, or rather at the very conception as that's what we saw as the Samuel says in the mother's womb itself it has been passed on. Okay. So yeah, David uh, did describe this great truth very clearly to us. So it was the Adam, the one man who was the first to cut the ribbon of sin who entered and walked in this way. It took her about 930 years to walk to the end of death and destruction. But today the journey is completed very fast, very soon, maybe 80 years, maybe 60 years or 30 years. We see many young people dying these days, right? So why is it so? Because for nearly 60 centuries or rather, 6,000 years and after so many walking in that way, it has become smooth now. It has become very easy. It is, they just slide into death and destruction. Instinctively, sin is being committed automatically. And thus very quickly, all of them, most of them are reaching this destruction and death. So sin has become so natural that virtue is not appreciated at all, right? It is more, more easier for anyone to sin today. It is okay to sin. It is, uh, it, sometimes it is even right to sin, right? So sin has entered into the very blood streams of mankind, right? And into the genes of men. Yes. Sin has developed to such an extent and mankind have so completely lost sight of righteousness. And being right is being strange uh, in today's world. right? So that's what is written in the scriptures. We'll read it in Proverbs 14 verses 12. Once again. There is a way which seemed right unto a man but there the is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Now, what is that way? The way of sin is seemeth right unto man. You know, sinning is right in today's world. It's fine. It is okay. But then what happens? The end thereof are the ways of death. Right? So to better understand the depth of this fact, let us uh, take a few examples of the ways of sin now so common in mankind. So let us uh, talk about the very common sin, uh, which, which uh, all of them commit very easily, spontaneously. That is lies. Right? This is speaking of that which is not true or that which is untruth or false. So it is said that, uh, you know, statistically, that we speak about 250 lies in a day on an average. Okay. It seems to be a wondrous matter, but let us examine the way in which we lie. For example, when uh, you know lies in greeting and answering the simple greeting of how are you. If somebody questions or asks you how are you, even if you're not fine, we end up telling I'm very I'm doing great. I'm I'm fine. By God's grace, you know, God has uh, blessed us and whatnot, right? So we show that we are fine. So that's a lie. And uh, 
even if we are not well, we, we say, I'm fine. That's how we answer. It's very spontaneous, right? And then, you know, in business, without lies, business doesn't work. That's how it is fed into the mind, okay? So while we, uh, while in the business, while in the office, while interacting, or uh, when we reach our, uh, you know, business places or work or a place of work, if we go late, we, we tell many lies, you know, it, it, it becomes our habit. We are habituated by lying. And then there is lies at home when visiting others home about the food served, even if it is not, it doesn't taste good, you know, not to make the person feel bad, we end up telling it was very good, very delicious, never eaten such a food. We exaggerate so much sometimes, right? And then uh, lies to children, to get them to obey by speaking of imaginary uh, frightening creatures, like maybe boogeyman or some other man, you know, many things are being told to them, which is, you know, a lie. And uh, claiming lies on simple matters to be white lies and that God is displeased only with black lies, okay, uh, which is very serious. Sometimes lying, uh, it doesn't affect someone. So we, we justify saying that this lie is not going to affect anybody. So it is okay to lie. So that is how it is classified being white lie and uh, black lie, acceptable lie and unacceptable lie. We even uh, tell a lie and say, we sometimes promise, we take a note and then we say really, right? So all these also happen. So then there are, uh, uh, you know, real lies and true lies and whatnot, right? So uh, just imagine, uh, brethren, so many lies have been spoken day in and day out at various places in different circumstances and different situations. So this is one part of, uh, you know, the sin that we are talking about, okay? So it's instinctively a lie that comes out of any, anyone's mouth today. Now, the speaking the truth now has become so, so, so difficult. And sometimes speaking truth is also unacceptable because you are, you are said to be rude. Uh, whenever you are being truthful, you have to be straight. You have to be simple. You have to be straightforward. So it is said uh, that, you know, when you speak truth, you are hurting someone's sentiments. You are being rude. It is not accepted. So that's how it has become uh, nowadays to speak the truth. Then let us also examine on another uh, sin, which is slander and gossip. So this is the speaking of others' behavior or character, and then their doings openly and publicly through discussions, conversations with neighbors of somebody else, or uh, through, uh, you know, magazines and kitty parties. Like sometimes, sometimes we also try to read about others' gossips, right? Or uh, sometimes we also meet up to speak about others. So, so very, uh, uh, you know, it, we make it a very serious matter, right? And then uh, it is considered uh, as fun to discuss about others' lives and their weaknesses and doings. It is called, it is also called as time pass sometimes. So it is always at another person's expense. The gossiper or the slanderer would not bear to have the same wound spoken of himself or herself. If the same thing was spoken about himself or herself. It is not acceptable by the one who's, who himself is speaking about others. This serious matter of character assassination or character murder is taken very lightly nowadays and has become a matter of enjoyment and even entertainment. So this is another part of the sin. And then the next one being the selfishness. This is the condition uh, that thinks behaves and exalts itself in all situations and moments of daily life. 
it's like uh, it is exhibited in everyday uh, uh, of life in places such as at home and among among the family members with regard to the use of household appliances or uh, work of the house or it sometimes even eating of the food we become so selfish we consider that you know we are everything belongs to us and it belongs only to us and first it belongs to us and then to the others similarly if you are traveling in bus or trains or planes you know uh, the kind of um, fights we seem to have about the seating place or not not accommodating to the others you know the, the use of facilities it is used in such a way that we don't even bother about others so that's how it is or even at school when uh, children are among other other their classmates or while they are playing in the playground you know the opportunity is not given to the others but it is always grabbed for self and again uh, at businesses with all the day to day transactions and the doing of the various works you know we see selfishness there and selfishness among the leaders and the politicians and and in this is how it is no it's supposed to be a service a selfless service but which has turned to be a very selfish self motivated uh, kind of a profession to make self gain so that's how it has turned to be and yes the great majority of all the troubles and disturbances in the world has its root cause in selfishness and the list can go on and on and on so this is the broad way or the path that now the majority of the world you can see it in the chart okay which the majority of the world of mankind who are into this broad way of destruction due to their sinful traits and sinful conditions prevailing and thus the whole of the world of mankind are into this way of destruction so here in the chart you can see is uh, it is represented by the plane called the plane r you can see it on the chart uh, if if it can be pointed okay so it is the plane r which has led everybody into destruction uh, or rather it's still leading everyone into destruction and then above the plane r you see another point called the plane p which is close to plane n n over here represents the perfection the perfection of human creature the perfection at which adam was created before his fall in the garden of eden right and then as he sinned he fell into this broad way which took him to the plane of destruction that is the plane r which is imperfection and uh, above in between n and r you see another plane called the plane p which is representing the special condition of the people of israel as they received a typical tentative justification through the animal sacrifices or the through, through annual atonement day sacrifices uh, which you you could uh, uh, you know read it in 1629 30 uh, you can note it down and read it later right then god gave israel the law and it had a promise which we read at read it in galatians chapter 3 verses 12 please read galatians 3 verses 12 and the law is not of faith but the man that do them shall live in them yes so the law is not of faith but the man that doeth doeth them shall live in them yeah god gave israel the law through moses as a way to life but none could gain it for god's perfect law could not be ever kept by fallen and imperfect men galatians chapter 2 verse 16 please read 
Galatians 2.16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the work of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. By the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified because we all fall short of it. None of the humankind have been able to you know, completely follow the law except our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So thus all of Israel too went to death despite having given the law which was, which was meant to be a way of life. But they failed in it. They couldn't keep up with it. So this is then was the broad way leading to destruction on death and, and was the only way open until the coming of Jesus for both the world and Israel. So that, that was the only way that was there. So yeah, from Adam to Jesus, the only way open was the broad way. So now uh, we, I, I hope we have very clearly understood what is the broad way, who opened it, you know, what does it really mean and how it, uh, you know, how we are or the entire mankind is under this destruction because of the sin. And the sin was passed down from generation to generation, generation to generation to many thousands of years now. Now coming to the second way, the narrow way. Then uh, with the death of Jesus, they opened a new way. Which, let us read about that in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 and 20. Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the wheel, that is to say, his flesh. So yes, Jesus through his death on the cross opened a new and a living way, right? A new and living way. And that is the way that Jesus referred to in Matthew 7, 14. Please read it again, Matthew 7, 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead unto life and few there be that find it. Yes, so this was the new way and it was to life. And Jesus recommended to enter into that way as we very clearly read it in 7.13, Matthew 7.13. Matthew 7.13. Enter you in at the straight gate, for yes. wide is the gate. Sufficient sister. Enter ye in at the straight gate. He is recommending to enter into that gate. Not the, not the wide gate. Right? but into the straight gate. So this is the narrow way with a straight, small and a narrow gate that leads to life. Now, what does this mean? What is this way? And what is the life that it leads to? The renting or tearing of the veil in the temple leading into the most holy at the death of Jesus was a sign of the opening of the narrow way. We read of this matter described in the scriptures. Let us turn to Matthew 27, 51. Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the wheel of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And uh, uh, also read uh, Luke 23, 45. And the sun was darkened, and wheel of the temple was rent in the midst. Yep. And uh, Mark 15, 38. And the wheel of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. What a grand sign of the opening of this way. 
that veil of the most holy was so heavy and so thick that it could not even be lifted by the high priest when he entered there once in a year during the atonement days uh, sacrifices right he had to crawl under it and imagine such a thick veil tearing of its own it was a real real wonder an awesome wonder so now let us understand the first, first the significance of tearing of this veil as we read it in uh, hebrews chapter 9 verses 2 to 8 hebrews 9 2 to 8 for there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread which is called the sanctuary and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and aaron rod aaron's rod the budded and the table of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing that mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly particularly now when these things were thus ordained the priest went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of god but into the second went the high priest alone once every year not without blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people the holy ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing so the tabernacle of god which moses was instructed to build in exodus 25 verse 9 had the innermost room being the most holy and it represented the heaven and the presence of god the shekina light there representing the presence of god himself uh, the, the details of these tabernacle will be taken up in future classes so yes uh, this was the way opened by jesus a way which leads to heaven it is a salvation of which we read uh, the description in hebrews chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 hebrews 2 3 and 4 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gift of the holy ghost according to his own will so yeah this way is also called uh, so great salvation as referred in the scriptures and is the heavenly salvation which uh, apostles paul speaks in philippians chapter 3 verses 14 philippians 3:14 mama hello mama mama okay so let me read this philippians 3:14 i yeah continue sister i press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus and what then is this life that the narrow way leads to right so he says i press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus right so we read of it being described in romans chapter 2 verse 7 romans 2 7 to them who by patience continues in well doing seek for the glory and honor and immortal immortality eternal yes so the the life offered we read here is to be immortality right uh, to them who by patient continuance in well doing seek for glory honor and immortality you know what does this mean what is immortality 
many do not have the clear thought of the meaning of immortality it is thought that all men are basically immortal in that their souls cannot die is that what the bible teaches let us turn to first timothy 6:16 first timothy 6:16 who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting amen now who is this who only hath immortality who alone who only has this immortality it cannot be jesus for uh, we read here who no man had seen nor can see jesus was seen yes it is the heavenly father the bible teaches us that he only had immortality in the beginning all living creatures in heaven and on earth were created mortal and in in heaven were mortal spirit beings while adam was a mortal human being that's how we differentiate mortals are beings who have life in them but can die immortals are those who cannot ever ever die immortality is where death is not a possibility at all and what of human race let us now read from the words of jesus luke chapter 9 verses 60 luke 960 jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead but go you and preach the kingdom of god all the children of god or or, or rather children of adam are not even referred to as mortals but rather as dead because after the fall of eden eden fall in eden all are born to die they they are born with a right to die or rather having no right to live at all mortal living beings have a right to live like the angels in heaven they are mortal but they they are not subjected to death however they can die while human being they are born in sin in in into destruction and into death so they are all subject to death the that's the reason we see no no human being exist forever right and now what about jesus then let us read about him in revelation 1:18 revelation chapter 1 verses 18 I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive for evermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death I am he that liveth and was dead please underline and was dead yes this is Jesus speaking and what is he saying he says I was dead even jesus died as a mortal mortal perfect human being on the cross as we read it in matthew 27:50 matthew chapter 27 verses 50 we turn to matthew 27:50 to 50 okay Jesus when he cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up his ghost but after the third day Jesus was granted as we read in John 5:26 he was granted the son he has granted the son the immortality of the father and now is so immortal as we read it in revelation 118 which says and behold i am alive for evermore amen now having understood this 
Let us now read another important matter in Second Peter one verses four. Second Peter chapter one verses four. Chapter four, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Promises uh, that by this ye might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Jesus, Jesus's followers are now in the gospel age promised this life on the divine nature of immortality too. It sounds almost unbelievable. But let us read and confirm the matter in another scripture, in other few scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 53 and Revelation 20 verse 6. Please read Corinthians 15 53. 15 53. For this corruptible must be put on in corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on in corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second that hath no power. But they shall be praised of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Here again is mentioned that promise of immortality in what is called the first resurrection. So this promise of immortality is also referred to by the Apostle Paul as a crown in Second Timothy. Chapter 4, verses 8. 2 Timothy 4, 8. Second Timothy 4, 8. Henceforth there is a lay, laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is the appearing. So this is also called as the crown of righteousness, right? Uh, it is with this promise in mind that the Apostle Paul writes to Christians in Romans chapter 12, verses 1. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So see here, uh, dear brethren, the Apostle Paul beseeches, or rather pleads and requests, saying, brethren, to present your bodies or their bodies as living sacrifices. I don't know why. What does this mean? This speaks a life of sacrifice in following our Lord Jesus' footsteps. Yes, again, we read of the same matter very clearly in Philippians, first chapter, verses 29. Philippians 1 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. It is given unto us on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, not to just be a mere believer, but also to suffer for his sake. Right? And then in 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 12. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. It is faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, he also will deny us. If we be dead with him, we shall live with him. If we suffer with him, we shall also 
reigneth with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Yes, the Christian way is not just to believe only, but mm. also to follow the master into sacrifice and, and to death. But we read that a very few small number of Christians, be it that find it, understand the great opportunity and privilege available to us. So Jesus in another place described this narrow way in a, in a statement uh, where many have not clearly understood. And in fact, many have even misunderstood this. Let us read that in Matthew 19 verses 24. Matthew chapter 19 verses 24. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So this scripture is uh, again repeat, repeated in Mark 10, 25 and Luke 18, 25 as well. So now what does it mean? If it can be taken literally, it's, it's really going to be an absurd statement which is absolutely ridiculous to even consider. It, it cannot be a literal statement at all, right? Uh, uh, you cannot try and put a camel into the, or make it pass through the needle's eye. So, but there, there are critics of the Bible who quote this verse along with others and use it as an example to portray that Jesus' teachings were baseless and untrue. So what really is the meaning here? Mind you again, brethren, we, we, uh, let us be reminded the statement Jesus made or the words that he spoke were mostly parabolic in nature. And we need to understand the words. Sometimes phrases were used by him. right? So let us understand what it really meant. So we must remember, <clears throat> in, 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 in uh, addition to, uh, to it being a parabolic, uh, language. It also contained places and things which were which Jesus observed around him during his time. And he used it in his teaching so that people could relate and understand them. So this is one such example. We will see many more in the coming classes as well. So now what did Jesus mean here by the words eye of the needle? Jesus was referring here to a gate within the main gate of Jerusalem. It so happened that when the main gates were closed after the sunset, the returning tradesmen and businessmen would have to get off their camels, which was uh, which were their uh, you know vehicles of transport, and unload the load of merchandise and luggage and that they were carrying from different places and then make the camel to bend, make it pass through the eye of the needle, which is the, the huge gate and which had a very small door into it, okay, which, which was used to be, uh, you know, to commute after the sunset or to enter after the sunset. And then the camel had to be bent and then it had to enter. And then again, carry all the, uh, you know, unloaded uh, carry, carriage or the, the, the loads, the goods, the merchandise into the gate and then they had to load it again onto the camel's back and that is how they had to ma make their way into the city, okay? So this was the way to enter through, through the eye of the needle gate. And Jesus was speaking of the difficulties that, that would pose a rich man uh, who came through the gate, who might have to, you know, uh, you know uh, remove the entire merchandise or the, the, the goods that he brought. It, it, it almost seemed impossible or difficult for him to do this, go through this ordeal. So when it was difficult, it was yet possible. So too, the narrow way in following Jesus would seem impossible at first. Uh, 
but many for many but it is actually possible or else god would not send for such a call we will study greater details of this special christian call calling of the walk of life in the future classes so this dear brethren is the narrow way to great glory now let us come to the third way uh is is there really a third way which is this way let us see uh, uh we see that we saw the broad way you know which was uh, in the plane of a uh, uh, plane r which led to destruction the way of sin and uh, you know way of sin and death or destruction so is that the end for all mankind will this mankind be doomed forever is there no other hope at all no hope at all for mankind who there were many 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 who have died who have you know who are destroyed even with without hearing the word or the name of our lord jesus they never had an opportunity to believe him so what about them is not jesus the world savior too let us look for the answer in first john 2 verses 2 first john chapter 2 verses 2 and he is the propitiation of for our sins and not only for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world yeah so jesus death on the cross of calvary was not only for our or the church's sin but also for the sins of the entire world the whole world and this we read again very clearly in first timothy chapter 2 verse 6 timothy 2 verse 6 first timothy who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time so yes uh we thus expect the world to to have a salvation isn't it the world salvation is the third way that we are going to be introduced to and see now how is that salvation of the world going to be let us read about in uh, isaiah 35 verses 8 isaiah chapter 35 verses 8 and 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 highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men through full shall not err therein yeah so it is for the wayfaring men this is reference to sinners the world of mankind helplessly under the inheritance of sin uh but who are meant by these fools let us uh, read the scripture in sam 14 verses 1 sam 14 verses 1 the fool had said in his heart there is no god they are corrupt they have done abominable works there is none that do it good yes the fools are the world's greatest learned one and the scientists those that now openly proclaim that the universe has no personal creator and that there is no being called god but that all creation took place and came into being due to certain circumstances in the distant past so that's that is called the big bang theory yes indeed uh, these are the fools who will not be deceived upon the highway 
and will not then err in their understanding because we read of them in isaiah chapter 29 verses 24 isaiah 29 24 they also that err in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmur shall learn of doctrine they also that err in the spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmur shall learn doctrine so these are the ones the great ones of today who who have erred who have murmured who have said that there is no god there is no creator there is everything has come through evolution through maybe also big bang theory so now let us see more of this way the highway in isaiah 35 verses 9 the third way in isaiah 35 no no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up there on it shall not be found there but the redeem shall walk there is this referring to the animal and it says there shall be no lion and no ravenous beast how sad that it will be because the lion is such a graceful and a awesome animal so even the even it is called the king of the beasts so now how many rush to the zoo only to see the see the lion to behold it so is this a literal statement no the lion being referred over here is the lion which we read about in first peter verse 5 verse 8 chapter 5 verse 8 sorry first peter chapter 5 verse 8 be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the lord draweth nigh yes uh 58 did you read 58 sir Yes, brother. First Peter five eight. Yeah. Yeah. Be ye also patient. Okay. No. Establish your heart. It it starts saying because your adversary. Okay. 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 Um. Be sober. Be vigilant. because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walk about seeking whom he may devour yes so it is satan who is referred to here as the lion this this scripture refers to the fact that he will be bound during that period so he won't be available to deceive deceive the people as we read in revelation 20 verses 3 Revelation twenty verses three. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be lose lose a little season. Look at that, Satan the lion will be bound. and not allowed to deceive the people any more then what do we read as we continue continue in uh, isaiah 35 9 and 10 isaiah 35 9 please read isaiah no lion shall be there yeah. no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up there on it yeah. shall not found there but okay. yeah. and no ravenous beast shall go up there on so what are these and what do they mean we saw that the lion symbolizing satan so to these ravenous beasts must symbolize something of satan and under satan's control as the lion is the king of all the beasts so yes these refer to all satan's systems and sources of evil like bars and gambling dens and prostitution 
misleading cinemas, TVs, etc., etc. What not has come today, right? So all these lead to the ways of sin and gradually bring destruction, that is death. So now what do we read of these? It shall not be found there. These satanic systems or the sources, sources of evil shall not be found there. Where? In the third way. Yes, in that way, all these sources of sin and temptation will no more exist. Come what me. It will be a new world order, a new world system. Let us continue reading Isaiah 35 9. Isaiah 35 9. Please read Isaiah 35 verses 9. Um, no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall work there. But the redeemed shall, or rather, if you read in uh, uh, the KJV, it says the ransomed of the Lord shall return. Here we read of the ransomed of the Lord returning. What does this mean? Yeah. The ransomed of the Lord is here a reference to the world of mankind who will then return from where they went. Now, where do the whole or where did the whole world go to? We read, we read earlier that they, the whole world of mankind went into or walked into the broad way of destruction and death. But now by the grace of Jesus' ransom sacrifice, they will return by the awakening of the dead. As we read that, and uh, you can just note it down, Daniel 2.2, 2, which you can refer it later. Daniel 2.2, 2, right? And then uh, we read uh, that then there will be a time when all will be made alive again. As we read it clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22, which says, as in Adam all die, so shall, so shall all be in Christ made alive. Right? So in Christ shall all be made alive. So thus all will be resurrected as Paul confirms, Apostle Paul confirms this matter in Acts 24 verses 15. Please turn to Acts 24 15. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. There shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. So this is confirmed as we read in God's, as per God's will for the mankind. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. This is God's will. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of truth. Yes, this is God's will and it will surely come to pass, dear brother. That glorious and wonderful day is not very, very far off. Now, what does saved mean here? If correctly understood in biblical language, it refers to being saved from what? Saved from death. This verse refers to the two-step process of salvation of mankind. First, the deliverance from death. And then secondly, the awakened ones must then be delivered from his or her sinful condition. Deliverance from death. And then awakening ones 
the delivered ones from the self sinful condition so thus all are to be saved from death through the resurrection for all and will then come unto the knowledge of the truth how will this great wonder of resurrection come about let us read that in luke chapter 13 verse 29 and 30 luke 13 29 30 29:30 And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God and behold there are last who shall be first and there are first who shall be last So here is the secret of how the resurrection of the dead is going to take place There are last the last to die which shall be first to rise from the dead and there are first the first one who are already dead or first one to die which shall be last to rise from the dead indeed this is to be an order the last generation to die at the time of the resurrection will be the first to arise while the first generation to die that is adam and his generation at the very beginning who died will be the last to arise now this is to allow acclimatization and adjustment to the kingdom conditions in the company of the known family relatives and friends having risen from the dead and the condition of the person and his body will be the same as had been a death both mentally and physically it's it's like in today's world when our children are born they do not understand the the circumstances and the conditions in which we lived till they were born right so whatever is told to them it just seems to be a story so it is difficult for them to understand and sometimes even adapt if they, if at all they had to adapt such uh, circumstance and situation right to acclimatize that this is the reverse process which is being worked out by god so that you know the entire human kind will be able to adapt to the new conditions and be able to bridge that gap okay so thereby the first the last to die will be the first to rise and the first to die will be the last to rise right so there uh, we see that you know there will be absolutely no change at all so this we find confirmed to us in the scriptures job 1926 and 27 job 19 26 and 27 the one who being resurrected will be as he was when he died the same being the same person the same uh, the features everything is going to be the same there is absolutely no change at all job 19 2627 and do after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall i see god whom i shall see for myself and my eye shall be shall behold and not another through my veins be consumed within me please note the words whom i shall see for myself and mine i shall mine i shall behold and not another so yes there will be no change in the personality at all in the being at all each will be able to naturally recognize oneself without any changes without loss of their memory as well thus next must come the deliverance from sin how will it be accomplished read it in john 17 17 john chapter 17 verse 17 john 17 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy thy word is truth sanctify them 
through thy truth for thy word is truth the sanctification or the purification from the face of sin is only possible through the power of truth thus all must come unto the knowledge of the truth they shall be saved first and then after saving they will be sanctified by the truth so now how will this be done the first step as we read it in isaiah 29:18 isaiah 29:18 and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of the obscurity and out of darkness and the eyes of them that see shall not be dim and the ears of them that hear shall hearken hearken yes so 32 and 3 also uh, was read for you right so here uh, we see the the day then will be a very very different condition okay so the things that we read are not literal they are not literalized nor literal years okay this uh, teaches a uh, teaches us how all the world's eyes and ears of understanding will be open from satan's blinding effect for now the whole world are blind and deaf to the word of god they are unable to see the truth right in second corinthians chapter 4 verses 4 it says the god of this world had blinded the minds of them that believe not the god of the world has blinded the minds of them that believe not so the whole world is in a blinded condition they are deaf they they, they don't understand the scripture the word of god and and they they read them and understand them the way they want it to be and not from the perspective of god but from their own perspective right so satan has blinded the minds with deceptions and lies and then what is going to happen we read that in habakkuk 2:14 habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the water covers covers the sea so this is how it's going to be dear brethren the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters cover the sea so the word of the truth uh, will be dispersed through the whole world how you may ask it's very simple it, it's not going to be very difficult it might have been difficult 15 20 years or 30 years ago but now we know anything and everything can be disseminated very very easily Like that's what is happening that's what we are witnessing today that's what we are going through we are in various places sitting in our comfort of our home and listening to the word of god we don't need to go anywhere now right so god's word is reaching us it has started already it has begun so this is how the sanctification process is going to happen and thus gradually death and ignorance also will be completely blotted out completely removed we read that in isaiah 25 verses 7 isaiah 25 7 and he he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that is spread over all nations now what is these again these are symbolic okay and they signify covering now covering over here signify the adamic inherited death covering uh, over all the world of mankind and as we see as in adam all die so all are dying in adam and then we read of the veil so this signifies the blinding of the eyes of the understanding they all are blind so this veil will be lifted out and then this uh, blinding effect or the, the, the blindness the uh, the thing which is not being understood today will be very clear they will see through the obscurity please read isaiah verse 6 chapter 60 verses 2 isaiah 60 verse 2 
for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee how is this world is covered by darkness and gross darkness and who is covering the god of this world right isaiah uh, second corinthians 4 4 so he it is he who has covered the world with darkness how through lies through untruth through deception through you, you know disobedience right but in god's kingdom there is going to be a very great change and there will be many incentive to obedience in the highway the highway of righteousness job 33 verses 30, 24 and 25 Job 33, 24 and 25. Job 33, 23. If 24, there be a 25, messenger, yeah. okay, then he is gracious to him and said, deliver him from the going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. So, uh, brethren, this is going to be an incentive for obedience. God is going to give a reverse aging process, right? Their skin shall be as in the, in the days of their youth, you know? So there is going to be a reverse aging process for being righteous and obedient, uh, being obedient to God and faithful to God. So this is how from imperfection, man is going to be led to perfection. And then there is even uh, going to be a very generous trial period. Everybody will be on trial. But what is the trial period? Let us read it in Isaiah 65 verses 20. Isaiah 65, 20. Uh, there shall be no more tens and infants of days, and nor an old man that had not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. Right, yes. Sir. So there is going to be a trial period of 100 years. You know, everybody receiving an opportunity of, of at least 100 years, minimum 100 years, wherein he has the time to prove himself by learning righteousness and to, to prove that he can live by being a righteous person forever. Right? So this is going to be the uh, trial period. Let us also read 26.10, Isaiah 26.10. Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness with, will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Yeah, so there are also going to be people who are not going to accept the godly way, the righteous way. They are those who choose not to repent or reform of their sinful ways. They will take the way of Satan in becoming enemies of God and of righteousness. Let us read of them in Isaiah 35 verses 10. Not of them or, or the rest. Please read Isaiah 35 verses 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion and with songs and everlasting joy Upon the heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall free away. And the ransomed of the Lord, right, shall return and come to Zion with songs of everlasting joy, joy upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Again, uh, let us read Psalm 22, verses 27 and 28. Psalm 22, 
thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy way yeah so all the i think uh, sister you read some of the verse scripture it sam 22 27 28 says all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the lord and all the kindreds of nation shall worship before the for the kingdom is the lord's yes the great majority all or rather the great majority will turn to the lord and obey and worship when is this third way the highway to be opened please turn to first corinthians 15 23 First Corinthians chapter fifteen verses twenty three. Uh, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits; afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. yes the second coming of christ is to open this highway remember the broad way was opened by adam through sin which led to destruction and death and then the narrow way the way of life the the uh, life to immortality was opened by our lord by through his death on the cross which uh, you know uh, sig- uh, signified which was uh, symbolized by the renting of the veil in the most holy and then the third way or the highway wherein the whole world of mankind to receive the life for eternity eternal life will be opened during our lord's second coming okay so this is that third way or the highway the way of salvation of all mankind back to human perfection in which god first created an adam yes dear brethren we have been guided to understand this third way from the scriptures today by the grace of god by his holy spirit as we are now very close to the second coming of the lord which is going to be opened uh, which is going to be the opening of this way the highway and that it's so clear very clear god has you know made us uh, understand i hope this must have been a, a blessing to you all and uh, you know must must be clear if if at all you have any questions please do uh, you know uh, address it to us thank you thanks one and all and thanks thank god for this uh, wonderful opportunity thank you thank you brother thank you sebastian israel for a wonderful session hallelujah praise god what a wonderful salvation for the man